Hello everybody, Dr. Yu here with the next video from the Calgary Guide video series, Hyperosmolar Hyperglycemic State, or HHS. Before we begin, please help us reach more viewers by liking the video just as it's starting out, and by subscribing to my channel. HHS is another serious complication of diabetes, but unlike DKA, it is only seen in type 2 diabetic patients. We'll see why as we move along in this flowchart. Unlike diabetic ketoacidosis, HHS is caused by a relative insulin deficit, not an absolute insulin deficit. What contributes to this relative insulin deficit is inadequate insulin production by the body, insulin resistance in a type 2 diabetic patient, or non-adherence to insulin treatment, combined with stresses that increase insulin demand, such as infections like pneumonia, myocardial infarctions, severe stresses on the body such as pancreatitis, and other sources of stress which is reviewed in the Seven Eyes mnemonic in my DKA video. Check it out if you want to review. Now this relative insulin defect means that some insulin is still present in the body, but is not enough for the body to do what it needs to do. So some glucose is utilized by the fat and muscle cells, but some remain in the blood. First, this leads to hyperglycemia. And this hyperglycemia is actually a much higher glucose concentration than seen even in diabetic ketoacidosis. When the blood glucose levels exceed a certain point, 12 millimoles per liter, the kidneys start to be overwhelmed, and more glucose starts to be filtered out into the urine than can be reabsorbed, which will increase the urine glucose concentration, causing glucosuria. Glucose in the urine filtrate will promote osmotic diuresis, again, because water moves down its osmotic gradient towards areas of higher solute concentration. That results in large volume urine output, known as polyuria. And because the patient is peeing out so much water, that results in dehydration, evidenced by a reduced jugular venous pressure, JVP, and signs of orthostasis, such as postural hypotension, postural tachycardia, and increased resting heart rate. The dehydration, of course, will alter total body water levels and ion levels, causing electrolyte imbalance. Just as in diabetic ketoacidosis, in the hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state, HHS, the body potassium level is lost via osmotic diuresis. But potassium, again, can diffuse out of the body cells and into the serum, which may cause the serum potassium levels to be falsely normal or falsely elevated. To prevent hypokalemia, we must give IV potassium chloride along with IV insulin as soon as the serum potassium becomes less than 5 millimoles per liter. But of course, we need to make sure the patient has good renal function and good urine output first to avoid iatrogenic hyperkalemia. If the patient is alert and water is accessible, the patient will try to correct the dehydration by themselves by drinking more water, known as polydipsia. However, if the patient doesn't drink enough water to replenish lost blood volume, that will lead to a reduced extracellular fluid volume and increased extracellular osmolarity, such as hypernatremia, because the amount of solutes in the serum or in the extracellular fluid gets higher and higher as more water is lost. Thus, the hyperosmolar component of the HHS name. When the body is in a hyperosmolar state, water will osmotically leave the neurons and enter the higher osmolar extracellular fluid. When water leaves neurons, that unfortunately shrinks them, leading to neuronal damage, which causes delirium, lethargy, seizure, stupor, and a potential coma. The reduced extracellular fluid volume, such as reduced blood volume, also reduces the perfusion of the kidneys, meaning a reduced glomerular filtration rate and possible kidney failure. And that is a pre-renal cause of kidney failure. Definitely check out my future video on the causes of renal failure coming up. And this renal failure can actually worsen the electrolyte imbalances such as hyperkalemia and hypernatremia that commonly coexist with DKA and HHS. So those are the signs and symptoms caused by the hyperglycemia side. What about the other components? First, the hypothalamus again will sense low levels of intracellular glucose when trigger feelings of hunger, causing polyphagia, the sensation of needing to eat more. Inside the body of a patient with HHS, the cells are not completely starved, but they still need more energy than they're getting now. And again, that still triggers the body to produce catabolic hormones like glucagon, epinephrine, cortisol, and growth hormone. As a result of these hormones' function on the body, the body will try to increase blood glucose concentrations to hopefully increase cell glucose absorption. That will result in reduced protein synthesis, 
and increased proteolysis or protein breakdown in the muscles in order to produce more substrates or ingredients for the liver to produce more sugar through the process of gluconeogenesis. And of course, gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis in the liver will contribute to worsening the hyperglycemic state of HHS, contributing to that very high blood glucose concentration. Of course, the dehydration will also contribute to the very high blood glucose concentration as well. Note what pathophysiology is missing in the pathogenesis of HHS as opposed to DKA. What's missing is lipolysis, because the presence of some insulin, not much, not enough, but some insulin, will directly inhibit lipolysis. So in HHS, there's actually no ketone body production and no subsequent metabolic acidosis and ketouria, unlike in DKA. If ketones are detected in an HHS patient, it's likely because of starvation or other mechanisms, and not because the patient is in DKA. And that's all for hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state. For more topics on the complications of diabetes, you can check out my video on the pathogenesis and signs and symptoms of DKA, or the pathogenesis of type 1 and type 2 diabetes. If you enjoy this video, and you learn something more about why patients with HHS are so dehydrated and why it's so dangerous to the body, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.